my bill dealing with the um, hunting of wild mammals with dogs, where dogs are used for the kill, is not designed to target any community or any aspect of the wider country sports. It's um, intended solely to address a matter of great public opinion. It's consistent with the policies of my party, which have been there for some years. And also it addresses the fact that we are the only part of the United Kingdom not to have introduced legislation to deal with the issue of there being massive public opinion against the hunting of wild mammals with dogs, where dogs are used for the kill. And I would say in relation to any allegation that I'm trying to target any uh, aspect or sector of the wider country sports um, sector, um, the simple answer, it's a very small part of a very wide sector. It's an issue that needs to be dealt with. And I would hope that all of us, departmental officials, politicians, community workers, local councils, can work together to address the need that if there's a void created by the absence of hunting wild mammals with dogs, that people will be actively encouraged and supported to get involved in other areas of country sports and there's plenty of opportunity there to do that. So I'm going to get shots of kids and foxhounds cuddling each other and your words are going to go next to that. So that's how it's going to be. Are you happy that your words are going to stand up, that yeah. you're, you're not attacking a community, that those kids, are they going to lose their hands, they're going to lose all that love, that, that's, that that is a price worth paying for what you want to do? Sometimes there's legislative change which affects all of us as, as a people. Um, it used to be you didn't have to wear your seatbelt in a car. It used to be that people could smoke in restaurants. Many of those who, who would have claimed to enjoy the freedom of those activities complained when legislation was changed to restrict or, or prohibit those activities. This is exactly the same. The, the various opinion polls over the years a uh, consultation that I have done directly with the public shows that there is massive public opinion against the hunting of wild mammals with dogs, where dogs are used for the kill. Your time at Deira, you were very much, uh, you know, you were meeting anglers, you were meeting groups of anglers for the, for the interview, for the records. What did you learn about the country sports community from that? I'm very supportive of, of the wider country sports community and sector. I've worked with them extensively over the years, both in my previous employment in Deira Inland Fisheries and now as someone who represents a largely rural constituency. Over the years I have learned that there's a very close network of people, there's a great high degree of mutual support um, and understanding between uh, many, many individuals who work in that sector. I know they've, they've made um, great efforts in, in recent times especially to try and encourage more people, younger people, women, people from the disabled sector to, to get involved in country sports. It's a very important part of rural life and I fully understand that, fully support that. It's an important part of the rural economy but I think most importantly of all it's a way for people to come together, enjoy outdoor recreation, get outdoors and active and healthy outdoor activity and um, therefore crucial to, to all of those involved and, and others who will be involved in the future. Let's talk about the, uh, the polling. Um, our side will, has uh, attacked you, strong word, but pointed out that uh, it appear, you appear to be walking hand in hand with the League Against Cruel Sports on this one and not, uh, I'm not going to say consulting because there has been a public consultation so everybody can take part in that, but you have not uh, engaged enough with the hunting community on this issue. I have engaged with the hunting community um, regularly and often over the years. I do it all of the time. I work with local conservation trusts. I work with local anglers. I know many people individually who are involved in country sports and I, I respect what they do um, totally. Um, I know a smaller number, I have to say, of people who support um, fox hunting in particular and, and hunting, with do hunting wild mammals with dogs um, in general um, because of, of the nature of the work that I've done. Um, however, the polling that I will refer back to um, has nothing to do with any third party organisation who have of course over the years conducted their own polls and people I think have to respect that I have to work with a wide variety of groups and individuals in my jobs and my hands should not be tied in relation to who I work with at any time. I should be available to all groups and individuals as, an, as a, a public representative. But um, the most important opinion uh, poll of all to me is the public opinion um, public consultation survey that I did as an MLA launching a private member's bill which attracted 18,400 respondents, a record in terms of the Northern Ireland Assembly. Every time we have a poll uh, that's to do with hunting, 
we get a lot of responses. In fact, 18,000 is quite surprisingly low. We've seen the voice get 100,000, uh, which has led our lot to say that many of these polls, uh, uh, the answers originate from outside the areas to which they apply. How can you show you that the 18,400 are from Northern Ireland, reflect the views of Northern Ireland? The public consultation that was done in relation to my private member's bill was consistent with um, assembly practice and totally consistent with how consultations and similar private members' bills have been done throughout the years. Um, it therefore puzzles me a bit that some people in the country sports sector honed in on the fact that, that there might have been those uh, who completed the survey and related to, related to the bill um, who hailed from outside of Northern Ireland. The, 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 the critics have not addressed the fact that many of the people who are on their side were also from outside Northern Ireland. But generally speaking, the numbers from outside um, Northern Ireland, either in favour of the bill or against the bill, were relatively small. There is no way in a public consultation of that kind to filter those people out, but I am satisfied, absolutely satisfied, that the vast majority of those uh, who responded to the consultation were from Northern Ireland, and 78% of those were against the hunting of dogs, hunting with dogs of, of wild mammals. So you're satisfied, but you haven't been able to check? I have checked um, all survey responses individually. There's evidence that some people responded who weren't from Northern Ireland. Some of them were hunt, hunting activists and lobbyists um, from as far away from Australia, if my memory serves me right. Some of those who uh, supported the bill were also from outside Northern Ireland, but I think proportionately there were a greater number of people opposed to the bill who were from outside Northern Ireland than there were in support of the bill. So can I just clear out one thing? It's a private member's bill. It's a private member's bill, yeah. Why, why is it not, because I mean your party has supported this policy for a long time, why, why is it not sponsored by the party? It's uh, the, the avenue open to, to put a bill through the Northern Ireland Assembly is either a, a legislative process used by the cross-party executive or bills brought forward by a private member. So the, the, the options open to me are that I do it as a private member's bill, of course with the full knowledge of my party colleagues and with their support, or, or I wait for the um, Northern Ireland executive to do it and Northern Ireland thus far has failed to deal with this issue and is the only region of the United Kingdom which has failed to deal with this issue to some extent. The content of the bill itself, let's, uh, let's, let's start with uh, your, your motivation for doing it. Is, is there an emotional point in your life where you saw a fox being torn apart by hands and you said, that's got to stop? I think uh, w w what motivated me most of all well, were, were two, two, two main factors. First of all, it's the policy of my party and has been for some years. And I am in the business of, of trying to deliver on my manifesto commitments. But secondly, as someone who has been supportive of the country sports sector and worked very closely with them over many years, both as a former civil servant and as a local representative, I have been most uncomfortable as an individual that a sector that I supported largely in relation to rural economy, rural activity, social activity, was also facilitating a so-called sport w with which I so strongly disagreed. And I've always been, I think all of my adult life, of a position that I could not support. I, I understand that the um, principle of hunting to put food on the table, I understand the catching of a fish, I understand many, many aspects of country sport, but I was most uncomfortable with that little bit of the country sport sector that tried to justify the killing of a wild mammal using dogs purely for human entertainment or the dead animal being used as a prize. Where, where are you on falconry? I have no position against falconry at this point. I think that there are issues there around an animal instinct, a um, completely separate issue. I am focused currently on the delivery of a private member's bill to ban the hunting of wild mammals with dogs, as there a, a, still remains an outstanding issue in Northern Ireland. That's my focus, and I will continue to do what I can to deliver that. I mean, there are many cruelty issues. You know, the UK government's pushing through a bill on sentience at the moment, for example, uh, livestock suffers pretty terribly as a result of farming. When it comes to a question of which is more important, are you saying that fox hunting is more important? I don't want to develop a league, a league table of um, the importance of animal cruelty to, to different or individual animals or species. I, I don't think that's helpful or productive, that there would be, be a hierarchy of cruelty as it were. Um, so I think we focus on what we can deliver and when we can deliver it. I'm focused on the private member's bill on the hunting of wild mammals using dogs for the kill because Northern Ireland is the only region of the United Kingdom where this has not already happened and there is huge public support for that. I'm very pleased to say that um, when the Assembly came back after a three-year um, hiatus of non-delivery, 
um, which did create problems for um, animal welfare legislation, which had not been progressed in Northern Ireland. One of the first things I did when we restored the Northern Ireland Assembly in 2020, despite the challenges of COVID and a raft of other outstanding issues, was to establish, with the help of the USPCA in Northern Ireland, an animal welfare group, um, for all party animal welfare group, but at Stormont for the Assembly members to participate in and other people from the sector. Now we're 15 years down the line with the Hunting Act in, uh, in England Wales and the British Trust for Ornithology recently produced figures showing that uh, foxes are down 40% and there are for example you know, the former head of the League Against Rural Sports in the UK Jim Barrington who will, who will stand up and say that uh, the ban on hunting in England and Wales has been a disaster for the welfare of the fox. Is the fox welfare important to you, I suppose, is, is, is crucial. Uh, and secondly, um, given that that's, that's the experience, how is your bill going to be significantly different from what we've done in England and Wales? The welfare of all animals and all, all wild animals and all wildlife is, is important to me. And the protection of our wildlife, our native species, our, our natural habitat is of uh, great importance to me. And I think my track record in the Northern Ireland Assembly, the questions I've tabled to ministers um, over, over my time there will show my keen interest in these issues. So whilst there's a, a degree of conflicting evidence out there about the future of the fox, should the bill come forward based on experiences elsewhere, and I stress the word conf conflicting evidence, um, I think it's important that, that all government departments work together on the on the um, wildlife protection, natural habitat protection, the joined up thinking between government departments at the Northern Ireland Assembly and also different levels of government, both central and local, on these issues. So, the, so the important thing is for all of us to work together as public representatives and those in the environmental and wildlife sector to ensure that these animals are protected and that that their habitat is protected and welfare is looked after. And that joined up thinking will take us a long way in delivering success in these issues. But if you remove the interest in the fox, and I know you don't agree with the interest in the fox, you don't like the interest in the fox, but if you remove the interest in the fox, then you remove the welfare of the fox. That, that's the argument from the other side. Um, my, my experience would be, um, having been the party's uh, agriculture, environment, rural affairs spokesperson now for over three years, that there is a significant interest in all aspects of wildlife and all aspects of nature and all aspects of habitat protection in Northern Ireland and um, anyone who takes a look at our environmental sector will see not only the keen interest of the there but also the, the wide range of good and detailed expertise that exists in that sector and should be treated more seriously by government and, and harnessed, uh, I might say, more often by government at all levels as well. Is it a political risk? Uh, a political risk that you know people will look back and say Blair's bill did for the fox in Northern Ireland, or don't you consider that? I am not considering political risks or political gains in, in what I am doing. I'm sticking to manifesto commitments in the first instance. I think that's what politicians should do when they deliver those commitments and those promises to the people. Um, secondly. I, I, I do uh, unashamedly want to address the issue of this as a, a, an issue of great public importance which has not been addressed in Northern Ireland for many, many years and I am now attempting to do that. Queen's University Belfast came up with the uh, research which shows that um, in coursing areas uh, there are 18 times as many hares as there are uh, in non-coursing areas. Um, doesn't that indicate that uh, hares do better? When, when you've got coursing, for example, when you probably oppose coursing, I'm guessing? I, I'm very proud to say that my predecessor in the Northern Ireland Assembly, um, David Ford, who was a South Antrim member before me, um, ensured that action was taken in Northern Ireland to protect the, the wild hare. Um, I think there's conflicting evidence as well as that in the wildlife sector, um, which, which would not necessarily agree with, with all surveys done by universities or, or done elsewhere. Um, I'm prepared to look at all of the evidence in this regard, but most of all, my main driver is the fact that we have a huge job of work to do as a country and as a government in looking after our natural habitat and our native species. Surely that should be in engagement with the people who are out there managing the land. I mean, I know that fox hunting is a sport, and we're, but it, it ties in with the same people who are also doing the, 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 yeah. the land management. So... Uh, we're we'll coming back to a people question now. I mean, how, how do you maintain the trust of the rural people if you remove the thing which they keep on saying is essential? I think anybody looking at this with any degree of balance would see 
that um, I am generally supportive of a wide raft of country sports activities. My track record is crystal clear. I am not, and I should not be quoted as someone who is in any way anti-hunting anti or anti-country sports. It, it's a great frustration to me that many people um, active in the sector, not all, but many, have deliberately um, misrepresented what I'm trying to do by consistently referring to it as a hunting ban. It is not that, never has been that, will not be that with my name on it. It is, plain and simple, a an attempt to, to bring a private member's bill where dogs are used for the killing of a wild mammal for human entertainment. Am I right in thinking though that it, it goes a little bit further and it bans trail hunting and yet it doesn't ban snaring? So that seems to be a... Why, 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 why no trail hunting? Why keep snaring? I, I, I will be attempting, um, with the support of course of, of many people who have responded to, to the consultation on, on the bill, I will be attempting to close loopholes that have been opened or exist elsewhere as this bill is being brought forward. That's the reason why trail hunting is included, but it's important to point out that there are other aspects such as drag hunting, which are not included in the bill. Okay, and snaring, which is on, it, on the face of it. It's not at this point included in the bill. It's not. Uh, Dog work. Uh, so some of this, uh, it's sorry. probably fair to say, bill has currently been drafted, some detail is still to be thrashed out, but um, all of the intent, the, the uh, main thrust of the bill which is my intention, was made clear in the public consultation. There was at one stage, there was a thought the gun dogs might be included, but I think that's not included, is there? So, Absolutely not. But I mean, you have, you know, there's a couple of um, pretty happy lurchers over there. If it, There's two of them. If a, if a <laughs> rabbit got up out of those laurels and ran for it, would that be illegal? No, because it wasn't organised for, for human entertainment. Absolutely not. Yeah. It has to be organised. And we got very bogged down in, in England and Wales because it ended up being the intention of the hound and you couldn't put the hound in the dock. So in, how's yours going to differ from that? Well the, the hunting of a wild mammal using dogs um, is something that will be of course in almost every instance organised by humans in a hunt. It is therefore an activity or driven by the human for the human's satisfaction and that's the issue that I'm addressing in the bill. And the vicarious liability side, so I believe that the, if the landowner, if it happens on landowner's land, then the landowner is as culpable as the... the, the those, those are issues that we're currently considering as the bill is being drafted. If that, uh, I mean, is it your intention to make the landowner culpable whether they allowed the hunting to take place or not? My, my feeling instinctively at this point would be if, if where the landowner could be proven to have facilitated or organised or assisted the hunt, then they, they would be responsible. But where, but where a hunt had entered land without the landowner's permission, and there are many examples of that that have been brought to me over, over my time as an MLA, then we have, we have to look at all, all aspects of the argument much more carefully. Okay. Uh, I mean, practical situation, uh, uh, there's a hunt taking place. Uh, instead of, and where there have been successful prosecutions in England and Wales, it's because you've been able to say, that huntsman ordered those hounds to kill that fox. So there was clear intention. Now you're talking about the organisation. So is it now? Is, you know, do you know the structure of hunts? So is it now the hunt masters that will be in the dock rather than the hunts? The, the, these are issues that I, I'm not deliberately avoiding, but no but point. I think it's it's unfair um, t for anyone to ask me to give detail of a bill that is still being drafted. Okay. There, there are aspects of the detail of the bill that are still being considered. Um, it would be quite wrong for me to try and predict what the eventual outcome would be and perhaps misrepresent what the the outcome is when, when, we, when we know what it is. These, these are matters that are being carefully considered currently. I, I would appeal to people to, to themselves carefully consider what comes forward as a proposal. There will then be an entire process for that bill to go through in terms of the Northern Ireland Assembly and mem mem members of the Assembly and all members of the public will be able to see and consider all aspects of the bill at that point. What's the timescale for this? Currently we're in an Assembly mandate which ends in May of next year, although I am still hopeful that if the drafting continues at pace as it's doing, that there will be an opportunity to bring this to the Assembly Chamber by early autumn. And then the, the processes following that committee stage, etc. and other stages will, will flow from there. T timing is tight, but doable. I, I, and that's how I sum it up. When, when, when are you up for election next? <laughs> I'm up for election um, as, as, th as the plan goes in May of next year. There's been lots of speculation that we may or may not have an election before that. What I will say that in relation to this private member's bill and a wide range of other issues, if there's an election today, tomorrow or next May, I'm ready and my party colleagues are ready also. There is a parallel between 
know, injuring a pheasant and sending a gun dog after it and injuring a fox with a gun and sending a hound after it. Where, where are you on the, those two things? Again, those are details that will be considered as the bill is being drafted. And I'm sure members of the Assembly and members of the public will make their views known. And, and of course those in the country sports sector, as well as the, the environmental and wildlife sectors, will make their views known uh, more broadly, but also to me directly, I, I expect, uh, as we go through the process, um, still to be looked at, still to be decided, aware of some of the intricacies that exist around this, and I will consider them carefully. People love their dogs here. They love their hounds. Absolutely. You might be responsible for the, you know, having all the hounds put down. How's that going to go? I would be hopeful that those who care passionately about those hounds would do what they claim always to have done in looking after those hounds and I'm hopeful that we will have conversations around the current lifespan of hounds that, that participate in hunts and um, how they're looked after in their sort of later stages of their life and end of life care and all of those other issues but I'm, I'm happy to discuss those issues at any time. Fox hunting is pest control, what are your alternatives to uh, the idea of managing foxes? I noticed in the article with Albert for example you were talking about uh, fencing which I don't, and also uh, uh, chemicals. Are you, are you standing by that? I'm saying clearly that um, all alternatives to uh, measures being used currently, which are being used um, despite the massive, massive public opinion against them, um, need to be carefully considered by the department, those involved in the practices, those involved in the sector, and I would be hopeful that the department will be supportive um, of those um, who need additional help to, to protect their, their farms, protect their property as we go forward and, and these are conversations to be had in the future. I can say that I am not a paid up or active member of the League Against Grill Sports. It's been suggested that I am a member of the um, League Against Grill Sports by people who could not know, by the way, one way or the other. And the simple thing for them to do before they make that statement is ask me. And, and I really wish people would behave fairly in that regard because something I try to do in all aspects of my work, I may not always get it right and I may not always be able to please all the people, but being fair and being honest is actually quite important to me. Um, I've seen suggestions that I have a member, um, there have been more serious allegations than that. But some of them carefully nuanced, but I, I've watched very carefully, very, very carefully um, at, at comments that have been in social media, for, for example, and I would, I would urge people to be very careful about what they suggest, unless they know it to be fact. I mean, that, that's a very good and simple example, for, for, for example, is that those who say that I'm a member of the League Against Cruel Sports couldn't possibly know that I am, because I know that I'm not.